speakers may offer such objective criticisms of the school operations and programs as concern them. But in public session, the committee will not hear personal complaints about school, school personnel nor against any member of the school community except for the school committee or the superintendent in their capacity as operational leader of the Arlington Public Schools. Nor will the committee hear anything that might identify or infringe upon a student's privacy by name or incident. If you would like to sign up to speak, please email ediggins at arlington.k12.ma.us by 12 noon on the date of the meeting. The first speaker tonight is Rajiv. Hello. Um, am I uh, yes. okay to speak, start now? Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. My name is uh, Rajiv Swaneja, and uh, I'm a resident of 13 Mary Street in Arlington. Um, good evening, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today. I'm one of the two co-chairs of the Arlington Human Rights Commission. And on behalf of the EHRC, I would like to express the endorsement for the proposal for heterogeneous grouping at the Arlington High School starting in the next school year. I'm part of the study committee, and we heard from students and staff about their willingness and readiness to implement this pilot program. We met frequently to research, discuss, and debate heterogeneous learning models. We read many articles, attended forums on growth mindset, heard from representatives of neighboring school districts, such as Cambridge, Lexington, and Somerville. We met weekly for three months to come up with this pilot proposal. As part of the AHRC, we voted unanimously in favor and wrote a letter to the school committee highlighting the reasons for doing so. In our decision making, we were informed by research that provided support to the argument that heterogeneous grouping help address long-standing systemic inequities within the school system for students who identify as BIPOC, ELL, or who receive special education services. I make the following remarks in my personal capacity as a parent of a ninth grader at the high school. Following comments on social media forums and also listening to school committee meetings, I understand that you have heard from many within the school community who are not in favor of implementing this proposal. Many of the comments are from those who fear that the traditional honors curriculum students' experience will be affected. The notion that if more students pursue honors, that this somehow diminishes the honors curriculum experience is questionable at best. Furthermore, the research is conclusive that allowing everyone to learn together, irrespective of whether they pursue honors or not, will benefit all students. Education is improved through discourse, and the more diverse the discourse, the richer is the student experience, and consequently, builds peer support and the ability to learn from differing viewpoints. Events in the past few years have shown us that the community faces considerable challenges in all aspects of public life. In my view, the best approach in dealing with these challenges is by mutual collaboration, coordination, and contribution from everybody within society. Heterogeneous grouping models this behavior in the classroom, enabling students to work together, regardless of background. I hope the members of the school committee consider this aspect, and I request that you vote yes for this proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> next speaker is Debbie. Is she here? Debbie, you can speak if you'd like. Sorry. Thank you. Hello, sorry. Thank you for your patience. Um, hello, everyone. So I am, um, my name is Deborah Podjarowski. I'm a, a mom of a seventh grader over at Madison, and uh, my son is in fifth grade over at Bishop. I'm also commenting on the heterogeneous ninth grade proposal. Um, so I, um, I saw the panel that you guys did and I read the full proposal and I think it actually in its ideal form sounds absolutely amazing. Um, you know, it sounds great. Um, what my concern is, is that in reality, what ends up rolling out? Um, so I'm, I'm mostly concerned that it's going to end up being like a, pretty much like a lose-lose situation where the kids who need extra help end up not getting it because you know the teacher has a lot 
extra to do with like two different classes. And I know it was discussed in the panel, um, but I, I feel like they might not get the help they need. And then the other kids who are you know, maybe hungry for a greater challenge also won't get that. So that kind of seems lose-lose. Um, I do actually think though that this model could work in ninth grade English, um, given the right training and the right teachers, which I know um, I've heard discussed and it sounds like everyone's in favor of. Um, I think it could also potentially work in uh, global studies or history in the future. I think my, what my actual main concern that I want to voice today is, is that I know science is being discussed as next, and um, I've seen in plans like math in the far future, um, and I, I don't really see these models working for that, and the reason is, is because I feel like what's going to end up happening is that people whose families can afford it are going to end up getting outside enrichment, and people whose families can't afford it won't. Um, this is what happens in the younger grades. Um, I know that I had um, heard from a lot of people, you know, in math, like people will do RSM or other outside services, and it's it's expensive. So you end up with a situation where maybe kids who really do want to be challenged can't be <laughs> because they won't get that at school. Um, so that's that's kind of where what I wanted to voice today. Um, I, I definitely think that. Um, anyone who wants to should be in honors, and I think it's amazing that Arlington High School has the open honors program. Um, and I just wanted to comment this, maybe also something that has already been thought about, but I was thinking potentially, I wonder if resources could be spent um, to, to in some way have a group that maybe like would encourage kids who don't traditionally take honors classes to try it, you know, even if they're hesitant, and maybe there'd be like academic help and, you know, something like that. So maybe putting resources towards that might might be a good idea to encourage people. Um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, at this time, uh, and I apologize, Megan, I, I skipped over you. Uh, Megan Comedy, the uh, uh, student representative. Do you have anything to share tonight, Megan? Uh, yes, right now the council is transitioning from our previous projects into our new ones, which include planning for Teacher Appreciation Week, which is the first week of May, as well as um, assisting the freshmen and sophomores in planning a dance in coming late April. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is a letter uh, that uh, I'm going to share with the uh, committee and the public. I'm reading this not only as the chair of the uh, Arlington School Committee, but as the representative to the Board of Directors of EDCO, the collaborative. The letter is directed to uh, the Lexington School Committee. Dear Ms. Linehan, Chair of the Lexington School Committee, we write to you as peers and fellow members of the long-standing partnership of the EDCO Collaborative. For 50 years, EDCO has brought together 16 communities to serve students with special needs and provide educators professional development. Together, we have pulled time, leadership, and significant resources <coughs> in dedication to the students and families of our districts in good faith and shared interests. While we are heartbroken to dissolve the organiz this organization that has well served thousands of students and professionals, we are grateful for the thoughtful cooperation of all EDCO member communities to bring our partnership to a graceful close. It is in this spirit that we share our concerns about the remaining responsibilities of all the members of EDCO and assuring that our collective duties are executed in a timely manner to assure that no additional costs will burden any of our budgets in the upcoming critical fiscal year. Due to a variety of factors, including the pandemic, EDCO has been forced to dissolve as an organization and break the 15-year lease on its Bedford property. As part of the closure process, all the member districts of EDCO must resolve all liabilities, including the lease, as soon as possible in order to secure the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education approval to close on June 30th. This is necessary to avoid incurring an additional year of significant operating costs. Lexington Public Schools has been and remains a longtime member of EDCO as recognized by the Massachusetts Department of Early and Secondary Education. Lexington is also a legal signator on the Bedford Campus Lease Agreement. As a member and as a signator, there is no doubt that Lexington has responsibilities and obligations to the dissolution. Of, the ed of EDCO. While EDCO leadership has offered meetings, written letters, and attempted multiple forms of communication with Lexington Public Schools about their responsibilities to the dissolution process, 
including a recent meeting with the superintendent, the chair, and vice chair of the EDCO board, and the interim executive director. We have yet to receive any commitment from Lexington with regard to these liabilities. It appears the position that Lexington leadership has taken is that they are not responsible for paying their fair share of the dissolution costs. To date, Lexington has ind indicated that they do not intend to pay their portion of the lease costs, approximately $113,000, nor the fiscal year 22 operating costs, approximately $36,000. While we appreciate that $140,000 is, is not insignificant money, money paid for an obligation rather than in service to Lexington students, we remind Lexington leadership that all other EDCO communities are paying their share of the significant cost of the dissolution. Indeed, even communities like Wellesley and Winchester, which are no longer members, have affirmed their responsibility to fulfill their obligations from past membership. Other member districts, many that face significant economic challenges, are also meeting their obligations as good faith members of our long-standing collective. The stakes for the entire collaborative are significant. If Lexington Public School continues to take the position of not meeting their obligations to the EDCO dissolution, the cost of these expenses will fall to the remaining 15 member districts, many of which are facing staff reductions, budget shortages, our extraordinary financial challenges in our post-pandemic economy. To be frank, Lexington Public Schools' choice to turn its back on its obligations to add the EDCO Collaborative will mean less money for the rest of our region's students, money that can be spent meeting the challenges of the increasing social emotional needs, early literacy needs, and academic recovery needs of students who have experienced the trauma of learning and growing during the pandemic. In the spirit of 50 years of friendship and collaboration, the school committees of the 15 member EDCO collaborators request the school committee and leadership of Lexington Public Schools acknowledge and fulfill their obligations to the communities with which they have long enjoyed successful partnership. We make this request as neighbors and as fellow communities dedicated to the needs of our students. Let us see this 50 year strong partnership come to a graceful close with all who have taken part giving their fair share to see it done. Signed by William J. Hayner, Chair of the Arlington School Committee. I will entertain a motion at this time to authorize the Chair to sign this letter and send it to the Arlington Advocate and to each individual member of the Lexington School Committee. Mr. Schlickman. Uh, I would like to make that motion, but I'd also like to add to the motion that the letter also be sent to the other 15 EDCO communities and to the Commissioner of Education. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Thank you, Mr. Thielman. Okay, is there any further discussion by any of the members? Dr. Rampey. Thank you. Um, first, it's a great letter. Um, I'm sorry that we have to go to this. I just wanted to know some, and, and maybe this was already discussed, and I'm sorry if I missed it. Um, doesn't Desi have something to say about all of this and therefore don't they have some ability to intervene when Desi has uh, letters have gone to Desi from the board Desi has indicated that uh, Lexington has this responsibility and such uh, but Desi has Desi has the power to deal with chapter 70 but has not come forward to do so and has not indicated that it will they are supportive as far as uh, stating that Lexington is a member and has this liability. I'm sorry, I can't give you any more than that. Okay. And if they're not going to intervene, can't we sue? I mean, EDCO? The, and, and I understand that costs money and takes time, et cetera, et cetera, but I just... $100,000 is a lot of money, even I, if it's split among 15. I, so, the members of the board ha have discussed that, have asked that. The legal costs are one thing. The other part is if we do not, if EDCO does not dissolve by June 30th, it has to go through all the process and maintain all, all sorts of things for an another complete year, another uh, full <laughs> year. So the total cost would greatly outweigh this. What we are seeking to do with this letter is to bring awareness to the community. Uh, Lexington uh, has the ability to pay. They are not in the financial straits that other communities are, 
that will, it will have a negative effect on several of the members as well if they have to pick up this piece. That's the intent of this letter. And thank couldn't, you for couldn't we sue in retrospect to get reimbursement if, if it came to that? We would, the way I understand it from legal is that we would have to sue as an entity and the entity will cease to exist on June 30th and we would not litigate. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Schlickman. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's disgraceful that Lexington is doing this. Uh, uh, we, we all get into partnerships together for the purposes of doing good things for kids. And EDCO was a great idea when we started with it. Uh, times change, our ability to do professional development changed, uh, our ability and the ability of 15 municipalities in EDCO have changed and our needs have changed, which has sort of rendered EDCO obsolete. And I'm very thankful for the services they provided for children for all this time. But just as we came into this partnership with the dedication to operate within the terms of an agreement and to share the costs as appropriated by the agreement, uh, that agreement should be honored by all 16 towns. And unfortunately, we've got one, which is a very wealthy town in terms of municipal finance, who, who just decided they don't want to meet their obligation. It is a shame. And I'd like to just make two technical corrections, if, if I may. Um, in the second paragraph, it's the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. But, and, and I would also like to uh, add your Arlington to the uh, list of recipients, just to be consistent. Uh, Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else from the uh, committee? I would like to just add one uh, comment. I have been on the, uh, I've been the Arlington representative on the board of directors since July 1st of 2021. And at no time has there ever been a member uh, or uh, coming from Lexington to offer their side. So just want to add that. So at this time, I'll take a roll call vote uh, to authorize the chair to uh, send this letter and with the uh, added uh, copies that uh, Mr. Schlickman did. Dr. Ampey? Do we send it to our state reps too? Especially the shared ones? Sure. I think yes. And the senator. Thank you. This letter, or form of this letter, is being presented to all uh, members of EDCO. I just let you know that, okay. Uh, roll call vote. Uh, Ms. Exton? Yes. Mr. Schlickman? Yes. Mr. Thielman? Yes. Dr. Rampey? Yes. Ms. Morgan? Yes. Mr. Hainer? Yes. Uh, six zero vote. Thank you, everyone. Next item uh, on the agenda is uh, School Committee re uh, Reorganization uh, So I just have a little information. In accordance with that part of policy, BDA, School Committee Organizational Meeting, which states, and I'm just quoting a small piece of, the, of BDA, approximately one month prior to the School Committee Organizational Meeting, school committee members interested in officers' positions will notify the Administrative Secretary and or the Chairperson. As the Chair, I have received communication from three members seeking offices for the 2022-2023 school year, one for chair and two for vice chair. I recommend that each member familiarize themselves with our policies BDA and BDAA before our next meeting, at which time the school committee organizational meeting will take place. I will ask Ms. Diggins to forward copies of those two policies to each member of the committee. Uh, I'll repeat it again, BDA and BDAA. Uh, uh, that was information. If anybody has uh, memory, has any questions or comments? Fine. Mr. Hain is talking more on his last night than he's done all year. <laughs> At this time, uh, I superintendent's evaluation, Dr. Holman. All right, I'll take it so you can take a break. <laughs> um, so I wanted to speak with the committee about the evaluation timeline. At the beginning of the year, I had indicated an interest in one of our workshops in uh, having a timeline that would have you all do my summative evaluation at the end of this first year. 
And upon reflection and upon a bit of experience in the role, um, I wanted to share with all of you that I am open to shifting this timeline to November for a couple of reasons. One is that I've shared a lot of materials with you as part of my formative mm -hmm. um, evaluation, got some um, fantastic feedback from all of you, and I don't have a lot more to share between now and June. I'm sure I surely will have some that I could add to the materials that you got for the formative, but I also think that after we go through some strategic planning work, uh, enter into a new school year in the fall, and have results back from uh, both more surveys and from MCAS that you, I may have more materials to share with you and maybe a, you, may, you all may be able to give me more targeted feedback if we were to wait until November. So given that that had been current, that had been practiced before, I had asked for something different early, I've had the time to do the job for a little while and reflect on it, I wanted to open the conversation back up to potentially shifting the timeline back to November if that's something that committee members were still uh, contemplating or interested in doing. Does anyone wish to make a comment? Ms. X. I just have a question. Um, so we would, this would move your the evaluation timeline back to the way it was. The November way it was. To November. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Okay. Thanks. And my anticipation would be also that we would do a formative then at some point in the spring next year. So you'd do formatives for my first two years, and we would be able to do a formative in May, and then we'd be on more like a six month cycle than a you know three months in between cycle. Anyone else? <coughs> Mr. Swigman? I'm very happy with that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, yes. Okay. Mr. I, I think it's fine. Fine. Ms. Morgan and Dr. Ampy, do you have anything you'd like to share? You're for it? Okay. Oh, that's it. Oh, that's I don't the, get a chance? That's the whole, go for it. <laughs> yes. That's all I have. That's fine. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, and so we now have uh, superintendent's report. All right. Ms. Diggins will pull up my slides. Okay, so before you, you have our numbers for this week. Right now, last week we had um, quite an uptick in cases. We had 60 cases of COVID in our school, uh, 59 cases of COVID in our schools. Um, and this week we're trending a little bit lower at 38 as we move into Friday. We have had needed to do some targeted uh, masking. We've, mo we, so far, since we have required masking at Bishop, we have only strongly recommended it at other schools with small outbreaks. Um, our practice tends to be that when we hit about three cases, we will notify families. Um, we will tell them that there are multiple cases in the room. We will strongly recommend masking, and then we will do repeat testing on those classrooms uh, throughout the week. And we will often do multiple rounds of repeat testing in those classrooms, send home any students who test positive. It certainly spreads in classrooms um, when there is a case and when uh, there, is, uh, there are a lot of students who are not wearing masks. So those measures, though, are having a really positive effect on bringing cases down. Once we re strongly recommend masks, a lot of families send their students in masks, and it's able to bring the threshold down far enough that we're able to respond and keep everybody in school. Uh, our, our goal remains to make sure that students are staying in school as much as possible. Uh, the case rate in Arlington is relatively stable, and we continue to watch that as well. This is not working. Ms. Diggins, <laughs> can you adva advance me one? Okay, great. No, I didn't mute it. <laughs> I did that. I did that. Okay, now it's working. Okay, she has a pointer. So uh, for April, one of the things that I had said when we dropped the mask requirement and went masks optional was that I would be coming back around at least monthly to revisit some of the requirements that we left in place. One of those was pertaining to buses. The other one was pertaining to monotony preschool. At this time, after consulting with um, Steve Angelo, transportation director, as well as Joyce Schlanger at Monotomy Preschool, and folks at the Department of Health and Human Services and our own nursing team, I am going to lift the masking requirement on buses effective tomorrow morning. It will be optional on buses. Um, we're also entering a season in which it's a lot easier for us to keep the windows open on our buses. But we'll maintain the masking requirement with the waiver process at Monotomy Preschool. Given what we're seeing and what we know about what might be um, a second surge and the case rates in our classrooms right now, we still think it's very important that we protect our most vulnerable students, uh, many of whom are at Monotomy, and our youngest students who cannot be vaccinated. And so we would like to maintain that requirement with the waiver process. And we have had several families take advantage of the waiver process for students who it benefits to have masks off. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we are still um, 
doing outbreak response in our schools. We had a temporary masking requirement the week of 314 at Bishop. We're still doing individual class requirements and strong recommendations at several schools that are listed in your materials. And we also do a return to cohorting practices before we will implement mask requirements um, and maintain the goal of keeping students in school. For upcoming presentations, I just wanted to make the committee aware of some presentations that we have on the docket for the rest of this year. And if there's anything else that you all would like to hear about, please let me know as we move towards um, the end of the school year. Next time we meet, we will hear from our Arlington Public Schools librarians, which is an ever-expanding and fantastic group of people. Can't wait to have them. And we'll also talk about heterogeneous grouping. On April 28th, uh, we will do discipline reports K-12 to uh, for all levels. And we will have some of our principals here to help us with that. On May 12th, our, uh, my goal is to have the after-school programming report to you. And on May 26th, we'll talk about summer school. On June 9th, we will do a first read of the district mission, vision, and priorities and initiatives preview. Um, and we will do a professional development summary that day. The goal is that our uh, strategic planning team, which I'll talk about in a minute, will have at least a draft ready for mission, vision, and priorities. This is in place of what used to be uh, district goals. So this, these will be the district goals for us to look at mm -hmm. at the end of this school year. The initiatives preview is us saying, here are the initiatives that we believe align to these goals. We don't have the strategic plan in place yet at that point. So the goal would be for you to read those and provide approval for them on June 23rd at our last meeting. A few other updates. Um, we do have a strategic planning facilitator. Uh, LMP Educational Services will be working with us uh, to uh, plan and implement and facilitate our strategic planning group. We have sent the invitation out. We sent it on Wednesday. All of our strategic planning partners are going to be compensated unless they choose to opt out of that option, including anyone who's over the age of 16. Students who participate, if they are over 16, have the option of either being compensated or getting community service hours. If they are under 16, then they can have community service hours towards the high school requirement, even if they're only in middle school. So that's a great way for them to begin their community service work. And um, I'm pleased to announce also that we have already 37 applicants, and we just sent it out last night. So that's fantastic. Our equity audit team launch uh, happened the week of the 21st. Over 30 participants from across the organization are taking part in this, and we are also offering compensation for it. Um, and they're looking at district materials across seven domains, which we've been in the process of compiling, and they're working with our um, facilitators of the equity audit to do that. I enjoyed visiting the Bracket School play Wizard of Oz this past weekend uh, with my five-year-old daughter who also thought it was fantastic. Our elementary thespians did a wonderful job in their first uh, in-person performance in nearly three years. And the upcoming um, Arlington High School musical is next weekend, and it's the Who's Tommy, and I um, can, I'm happy to send you information if you'd like to get tickets. We're really looking forward to this. They've been working extremely hard, and we've been, I've been graced uh, by the re rehearsals as they've come and gone from the theater um, area of the new wing over the last several weeks. Um, in admin learning news, we have been working on culture and climate action plans after completing our um, first round of panorama surveys, and we're doing our final set of instructional rounds in April. We're also doing follow-up targeted surveys in May through June, looking at specific domains that uh, rose to the surface in the results that we got from the first round of surveys earlier this year. We have two administrative hiring searches that are about to launch for a uh, full-time director of wellness pre-K to 12 and a full-time director of visual arts pre-K to 12. And the enrollments are also in your packet. I am happy to answer any questions that the committee has. Anybody have any questions? Yes. I have an um, enrollment question and sort of thinking about Ms. Morgan too. This 347 for kindergarten is does not include ones that are, like haven't been fully, do I have the wrong? I, we updated it, but where are you seeing 347? I have 390 no at the moment. For next year, mm -hmm. am I in the wrong place? Oh, hold on. Is there a time stamp on yours, either one? No, I had updated, because I had. 347. Ms. Diggins, did you, did you update with the one I had sent? Is, I there, think an, is there an email that I should? Hold on a second. There was not an email. Hmm. I'm in Nova. I thought it was 390. Bring it. So she's, she's got a 390 okay. out there. 
Yeah, it is 390, but the one in Novus okay, is not the updated version. Okay. I, so um, I see the 390 one. I am okay. happy to project the, well, I can't. Mm. Okay. <laughs> okay, so the 390 includes families who are waiting to get through the process, or these no. are only ones that have been fully? These are real numbers. Okay. These are, this is fully okay. registered, gone through buffer zones, been assigned to school. Okay. Yep. So, and I just, like I said, I'm, how does Ms. Morgan? How does this line up with? I just I know you've taken thought about this for a long time and have a lot of data, and I'm just curious where, how this looks now to where we're going to be in September. Versus the. She got everything else. Yeah. Ms. Morgan, go right ahead. It looks a little low. <laughs> I but, mean, yeah. but I mean, it makes you think that maybe we won't have as many, right? It's also starting to like bend that curve, right, where it's not growing so fast. So that's when you start to get a sense of like, like it, it does that like exponential growth thing and that's when you just don't know where it's gonna end and it looks like it's starting to turn, but I don't know. I don't know where all the Stratton kids are either. So <laughs> I, almost, I almost said that back to Dr. Homan and was like, where are all these kids? Cause there are not very many of them, but yeah. yeah. I mean, we knew it was, we, we expect it to be a little bit smaller, so, I mean, I'm not shocked. But it looks, it looks low. Anyone else? Is it all set? Thank you, Dr. Holman. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving on. So I had something oh, on I'm the- Oh, sorry, I apologize. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, or and maybe Kirstie did too, I don't know. Go ahead, Kirstie. Okay, I'll, I'll go, but then it sounded like Jane also had something. So two things. First, um, Dr. Holman, you didn't mention the forum next week oh. on the 5th on the heterogeneous uh, group initiative. Not and intentional, that's, just an oversight. Yeah, um, so just what I understand, it starts at 6.15, runs till 6, 7.30, it's open to everyone, it'll be remote. Um, there is a link, I think, on the high school website, and there's going to be one on the district website, um, and it'll have information about it. So it's a time for people to have a chance to hear about the pro project and, I think, be able to ask questions. I'm not positive. That's the goal, yes. And I'm sending out a communication about it tomorrow as well. Okay. Awesome, and then my second question is more for the group and I guess Mr. Hainer. So the strategic plan, Dr. Holman was hoping that one or two of us would join. If there's more than that of us to join, how do we decide who it is? Uh, my, my comment to Dr. Holman is, if you don't get anybody, I'll be happy to join, which I am implying that if you've got two and I'm the third, I'll bow out. Uh, are there other members of the committee that are interested in being on this? So there's one, two, three, four. Okay, then how many do you want? Uh, I believe we can only have two. two. Okay. Uh, you, right now you have three. Ms. Morgan, uh, Ms. Dr. Ampey, and Mr. Schlickman draw lots. I don't know. I <laughs> We don't I'll have any. I'll drop out. I me? Can I'll, I'll, I'll pull out. Okay, so now you got two. So, all set? Does that work? I thought Len had his hand up. Len, did you have your hand? I'm sorry. I think Len no, did no, this. No, no, no. No, I was just saying that I think two is, is we'd have to consult with counsel if we did more than two. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Okay. That solves, that solves that. Is there any other discussion on this? For Dr. Holman's report. Yes, Ms. Morgan. Um, so, Dr. Holman, what I, I was trying to understand, so it sounds like the, the mission and vision that are going to be developed by this strategic planning group are going to come to us. And I guess I'm trying to understand, like, I guess I'm curious for people, because, like, I didn't write the goals, they were written before I came here but I'm sort of curious about what role the school committee had in that and I appreciate we just um, sent 
Mr. Schlickman and Dr. Allison Amke to the strategic planning group or whatever it's called, which is great. But I guess, like, if, how, if they're gonna come to us with a mission and vision, what, are, what else are we gonna do other than rubber stamp it, I guess? And like, if, if so, then like, I, I guess I just, I don't understand the role that we have in that, but it, if it's going to replace the goals, those are really, really important. And I think were developed with the full committee in the past. So I guess I'm sort of curious about how this is all gonna happen. We haven't done, like, a, like you know, we're living right now under goals that we set with Dr. Bodie last spring, right? So we haven't like done that cycle yet and have a new mission and vision, then I guess I feel kind of weird about not being involved in that other than just having to vote yes on it. So, so yeah, it that's would, my that's my feedback. I just I don't yeah. I I would hope that that this wouldn't be brought fait accompli. It would be brought periodically and g give us an update for us to have some input as a group. I, I don't know if that was your plan. Yes, I mean, my, my goal was to update you at the next several meetings, at all the rest, basically, of the meetings about the progress of this group and where they had landed. I don't imagine they'll have much in the way of drafts. I mean, there's a vision statement, a mission statement, and then there are the four to five priority areas, which are which would be the things that would replace the overarching goals that we have right now. Um, and we'll cover the same domains would be my anticipation as the four overarching goals that we have right now. The purpose of the committee and the, the development of this group is to be as representative as possible and to engage them in all of the data that we've, that I've used in part, as part of my entry plan and that we use to evaluate the progress of the school system. So um, I would be surprised, I suppose, if they were to come forward with a set of priorities and a mission or a vision statement that wasn't in alignment with what our community wanted and needed to see for our schools. Uh, but I am intending to update you all and get your feedback and I can bring that back to the committee periodically as the work moves forward. And we will have two members on the strategic planning team. The final thing would have to be approved by the committee, am I correct? The f yes, and the final so strategic plan would need to be uh, approved by the committee as well. Mr. Schlickman. Yeah, well, the reason why I volunteered to do this is that I've actually been a leader of the process in Lowell in my professional life. So I, I've seen that part of the strate strategic planning process. And given the cohesiveness of the community and the responsiveness of this committee, I don't think that we're going to be out of alignment. That said, is that any vote of the strategic plan is owned by the school committee. Mm -hmm. It's ours. It's a recommendation. And we as a committee can schedule it so that two weeks before we vote approval, we get a first read and, and can send back comments as well. Mm -hmm. If there are things that we would like to shape it because we are the people who are representing the entire community and it, it and we are empowered by them to set, to actually approve and set the uh, strategic vi vision for the district. So I don't, I don't see it as a conflict, and I don't think that there's a lot of potential for going astray. Mr. Thielman. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I think it was a decade ago we voted, yeah. we mm -hmm. voted the, 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 the goals, mm -hmm. and so it's probably a good time to review them. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we went through two readings and all that, and so <clears throat> that's what we would do. So it would come back to us, we'd have a discussion. I could bring a draft a sooner too. What's that? I could bring a draft sooner if they have one <laughs> ready. I just don't yeah. know if that they'll have one ready soon. Paul and I argued about split infinitives. <laughs> <laughs> we came to a conclusion. <laughs> Dr. Ampey. <clears throat> yeah, I was just gonna add that we did have, we tweaked them um, for things that were not included and, and stuff. So we, we definitely had more than just a rubber stamp on the last time mm -hmm. and and more than just grammar too. Um, 
So, and I would hope that we will have that ability in this too, and not just as, a, as the representatives on the strategic planning group, but I don't want to take away from the ability of the school committee to set, you know, to, to make sure that their vision is also incorporated. So, thank you. Well, Ms. Morgan. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I think, you know, the challenge here, right, is that, like, I, I totally appreciate that we can, we're going to send two members, but, like, I'm also a parent in this district, right? And so I can't participate in the strategic planning initiative by virtue, I can't apply as a parent because I'm a school committee member, right? Which is like a little, like that's really complicated. Um, and so I guess I just, you know, I, I appreciate the efforts. Obviously there needs to be, this group needs to be formed. It's just, it, um, it, it's hard because it then sometimes feels like, oh, well, this group did all of this work and this is what they want and why would you ever want to change it or do something different? And so it's just, it's, it feels complicated because it, you know, some of us are, I, we ultimately are precluded from participating um, in, the, in the sort of preparatory work. And so then we end up sort of having to like nod and go along with it. So. Anyway, I, you know, we'll see how it goes. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure nothing like wild and crazy is gonna come out of it and it'll all work out. So, thank you. And maybe it will. The, we, having the two members from the committee and the superintendent hearing what was just said, I think there'll be uh, any breaks that are necessary going forward in the planning will be applied. We all set? Okay, moving on, consent agenda. All items listed with an asterisk are considered to be routine and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a member of the committee so requests. In which event, the item will be considered in its normal sequence. Warrant number 22212, uh, dated March 22nd, 2022, in the amount of $779,997.37. Regular school committee minutes, March 17th, 2022. Do I have a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Uh, roll call vote. Ms. Exton? Yes. Mr. Schlickman? Yes. Mr. Thielman? Yes. Mr. Carden? Yes. Uh, Dr. Ampey? Yes. Ms. Morgan? Yes. And I vote yes. Subcommittee liaison reports announcements. Budget, Dr. Ampey. Thank you. So budget met last Friday to go over the presentation that the um, administration did for finance committee on Monday and then we all attended the finance committee presentation and discussion afterwards um, I want to read so first the presentation was awesome and there were very few questions at the end and the, then the uh, budget was unanimously passed um, so I want to say thank you to Dr. Holman, thank you to Mr. Mason, thank you to everyone working behind the scenes to prepare that. But I also want to read to you the email that we received from Mr. Foskett, um, Chairman of the Finance Committee, uh, which I know you folks have heard, but this is for our many millions of viewers at home. Um, Liz and Michael, your presentation at last night's Finance Committee meeting was outstanding, and as you could see, well received. I have also read through the budget document approved by the school committee and found it exceptionally understandable and transparent. There were many points that I could favorably comment on with respect to goals, policies, actions, and budget details. Amongst the many steps to drive good education results for all our students and their parents, two jumped out at me. One, restructuring and reorganization to create new and better services within a constrained framework. I'm sure this was hard work and required a high level of intensity across the entire APS team. Two, dropping athletic and music fees. This is a powerful signal to the entire community that equity and dignity is important amongst teachers, administration, students, and parents, that APS is a family. I'm sure you didn't get to this point alone, so as an interested citizen, I extend my thanks not only to you, but also to the budget subcommittee and the school committee as a whole and I sure provided both rigorous critique and strong support along the way. So, 
I think that says more than I can at this point, so I'm just going to leave it there. Thank you. Thank you. Community relations, Ms. Exton. Thank you. Uh, we'll be having a school committee chat on Zoom on Tuesday, April 5th at 9 a.m. Ms. Morgan and Dr. Allison Ampey will be in attendance, and the Zoom link can be found on the APS calendar. Curriculum instruction assessment and accountability. Mr. Cardin? Hi, yes. We met earlier this week um, to hear an uh, early draft of the proposal from the Better Genius Grouping Initiative. There were several members of the study group present um, to present uh, the, the findings and, and the uh, proposal and answer questions and receive feedback from the committee. Um, I believe the plan is to have that come before the full committee at our next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Facilities, Mr. Thielman. We met on the 21st, I think it was, with Mr. Mason, and we discussed uh, the three playground projects this summer, which are good news, uh, at the Bishop, the Stratton, and the Pierce, and uh, the construction should begin this summer and hopefully be ready by the fall, so that was good to get that report. And then uh, we talked a little bit about um, uh, the Bracket Playground, which I guess is a conversation that's uh, ongoing about how to repair that, and then we discussed uh, a report that a capital needs report, a capital needs assessment report that will be done at the Addison Middle School uh, April 19th and 20th, and a month later we'll have a report that, that can be used to inform whether it's worthwhile to pursue um, any support from the MSBA. Thank you. Uh, policies and procedures, Mr. Schlickman. Thank you. Uh, we've got a bunch of stuff to report. Uh, first of all, there is a stack of policies for first read, and I will run through them. The first one is policy BDA, School Committee Organizational Meeting, unanimous vote to recommend by the uh, subcommittee. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, this is merely a minor change that creates a reference to file BEDL, the land acknowledgement. File BEDB, Agenda Format Preparation and Dissemination, again, a unanimous vote of the subcommittee. Again, it is a um, minor change creating a reference back to BD, BEDL, the land acknowledgement. BID, thank you uh, to Mr. Carden for the recommendation on BID. He had his eyes on this. Uh, last year's uh, town meeting voted to grant a stipend to school committee members. Uh, our policy BID said that School committee members are uh, served without compensation, so we're making an adjustment in their policy to bring it in line with the town meeting vote. Uh, that was unanimously recommended for first read uh, by the subcommittee. File AC, non-discrimination policy, including harassment and retaliation. Uh, there was a package of uh, four policy changes that were suggested by the Mass Association, Mass Association of School Committees, uh, and they worked with the Attorney General Civil Rights Division to review the policies and to broaden discrimination to include harassment and retaliation. Uh, AC is the non-discrimination policy, including harassment and retaliation, <coughs> uh, recommended for first read by a three-nothing vote. Uh, second policy in that group is file AC-R, non-discrimination policy, including harassment and retaliation. Um, this is a new policy uh, and is a 3 nothing vote recommended for first reading. ACAB, sexual harassment. Uh, when we reached this, Dr. Allison Ampey noted there were some issues with punctuation and wording, and the superintendent agreed, so we... Uh, asked Excuse me. folks to, to take a look at it and we'll bring that back up at a, at a subsequent meeting um, just to tidy it up and get it in line. So on a motion, uh, so we voted three nothing to table that, uh, not for content, but just to clean it up. Uh, that'll be coming after our next meeting. File J-I-C-K, harassment of students, uh, again, in the fourth of that group and the subcommittee recommended that for first read unanimously. Then we reached files FF and FF and potential file FFE. Uh, the superintendent, uh, with the support of Dr. Janger, brought forth uh, a series of 
procedures for naming the new spaces uh, within Arlington High School so that it can serve as the exhibit for a procedure that aligns to policy FF. Um, it is in your uh, novus, uh, the recommendations from the superintendent. Uh, we will discuss it further uh, going forward at another meeting, uh, and we certainly would like to get feedback from the members who are not uh, on the uh, policies subcommittee, although we need to figure out who will be on the policy subcommittee next month. So that could be a, uh, uh, a, a, a little bit of a, a switch. We want this to be something that all seven of us as school committee members are aligned with and in agreement. And if you have any questions or comments about the process that was outlined uh, and recommended by the superintendent, you probably would want to have a conversation with her. One thing that she said is that it would be 2024 before we really, really, really need to have this in, uh, these names coming in, and she requested that we have the issue of the naming policy settled by the end of this school year. Uh, let me just ask the superintendent, who's nodding, if she'd like to, uh, through the chair, comment on this part. I would. I would just say, um, for in order for us to be able to have a plan for naming those uh, spaces at the high school in particular, and I think what, what we're leaning towards is really just a procedure for the high school project's purposes of making sure that the key spaces have a process for being named that doesn't bog the committee down in excessive conversation about each individual space, but also involves members of the community in putting proposals forward for those spaces because people are going to have um, ideas for how we could name some of the sort of key spaces of the high school that we just want to have something in place before the summer so that we can begin convening that group um, next school year and uh, start the process of naming some of these spaces before the building project is done. And I reflected in the minutes that Ms. Morgan had similar concerns to what she had for the uh, strategic planning committee in terms of things getting to the school committee at the end of the process which she expressed which I think is, is, is a valid concern. And uh, if Ms. Morgan would comment through the chair, uh, if, if, she, if she so chooses. Jane, do you want to make any comment? Or you no, I think I, I feel well represented. Thank you, Mr. Smith. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And, and, fi yeah, and finally, file EBC Supplemental General Interim Policy on COVID-related issues. We're looking to sunset this policy that we established uh, two years ago at the onset of the pandemic and amended going forward. There are three items within this policy that we are considering retaining and bringing into the elsewhere in our policy book, which would be the observations of special education programs requiring uh, vaccination or evidence of a negative test uh, student vaccination requirements, rostered extracurriculars, and for KI uh, vaccination requirements for visitors in schools and buildings. Um, there was some commentary about this within the minutes uh, of, of what we're considering. We've sin since this meeting gotten an opinion that this is within our regulatory powers to do uh, that was written by Council, I believe they're in Novus. Um, that is the report, and and so I move that we take the policies designated for first read for. Uh, actually, you don't have to move that. The the uh, these policies that we presented for first read are now before the committee for adoption at the next meeting. Can you make sure that uh, through Miss Dickens that we all get uh, co copies and notification of that. Yeah, they are all in Novus right. this week, and we'll right. make sure that they get back in next, next Thank you. for the next meeting. Mr. Thielman, do you have a comment? Yeah, I've, I've, I'm, so are we going to talk about this policy FF, or is this coming back for a second reading? Uh, uh, no, FF we're not going anywhere with. Uh, we haven't decided what to do with it. We're just saying that okay. this is coming, and we're going to need to resolve this between now and June, so that if there are issues with FF that people want to go and, and adjust, some of us 
thought that we should be taking part of the FFE proposal and putting an FF. Uh, I think that it can work as a standalone, but this is also an opportunity for us to look at FF and see if we want to change that as well. Okay, all set? Mm -hmm. We're all set to go? Uh, Arlington High School Building Committee, Mr. Thielman. Committee meets on the 5th at 6 p.m. <coughs> Thank I you. I Thank saw you. that you got demolition going on already. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Important things going window. <laughs> Important things. We get a better view now. I Do any of the members have any announcements at this time? I have a liaison update. Go ahead. Well, <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Do a, li a li liaison. I apologize. Too late. Um, the CPAC has requested to present their survey data to the committee sometime this spring. So as their current liaison, I told them that I would work with the committee to schedule that on the agenda. Since you may have the power <laughs> through Ms. Diggins and the But I just wanted the committee to know that that was. Fine, coming. it's coming. Any other liaison reports at this time? Any announcements by members of the committee? I just want to thank the chair for a great but year. Do, yeah. Wait a minute. I have two, I, I, wait, you, flip Oh, oh, you, it was already planned. Uh, <laughs> I have two announcements. First, I want to acknowledge that this past Wednesday, March 29th, and each year March, on March 29th was veteran, Vietnam Veterans Day. I want to thank those veterans and all other veterans for their service. Second, and hopefully no other comment, I would like to thank the following for all their help during the, my term as chair the superintendent's administrative staff, the school administration, the superintendent, and all members of the Arlington School Committee. Thank you all. Moving on. Are, there any, future, are there any future agenda items? Mr. Schlickman. I think we're, we're, we need to, uh, through the current chair to the vice chair, you know, uh, usually about this time we're getting requests for committee assignments for next year because we will need to vote that at the reorg meeting. Okay. So you, you got that? Mm -hmm. She's cool. Uh, um, at this time, uh, I just want to make an announcement about executive session. We will be coming back to regular session, but I am not, I'm pretty sure that the Zoom link and everything will not work. It, when we come back, it will be very short. It will be for a, a vote. It will be recorded and it will be put on the ACMI completed minutes and it will be part of the active minutes of the meeting. So um, we will be, uh, executive session will be coming back to conduct strategy session in preparation for negotiations with union and non-union non -union personnel. We have a question. I'm sorry. Yes. Do you need me to stick around to sign something tonight? No. Oh. I have work to do. I can sit in the hall and work. Why, why, why don't you? Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. <laughs> Just in case. To conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiation with union and or non-union personnel. Or you guys know who we are? Yes, Dr. Rampage. I'm sorry to interrupt. That's um, all right. I didn't, under, I didn't understand what Mr. Schlickman said about the current chair choosing the vice chair or... No. The, I, I didn't understand. At the reorganization meeting, one of the things that we also vote are subcommittee chairs and things of that nature. So the vice chair, who will be more likely be the new chair, has to communicate with different members of what chairs, they, what subcommittees they wish to be involved in next year. Oh, you mean the current vice chair? Yes. Okay, okay, didn't understand, thank you. Okay, and before I read this thing for a fourth time, I'm gonna look around. <laughs> and you are not yes, to sorry. Yes, Mr. Carter. Sorry. Go right ahead. Uh, I just wanted to suggest that Julie can pre-sign whatever we're talking about at the executive session. She doesn't need to wait. Thanks, Len. <laughs> <laughs> are we ready? Can I say yeah. my speech? <gasps> executive session to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations mm -hmm. with the union and yeah, on the personnel. <laughs> Important things. We get a better view now. I do, do any of the members have any announcements at this time? I have a liaison update. Go ahead. Well, <coughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Do a, li a li liaison. I apologize. You right? Um, the CPAC has requested to present their survey data to the committee sometime this spring. So, as their current liaison, I told them that I would 
work with the committee to schedule that on the agenda. Since you may have the power <laughs> through Ms. Diggins and but the I just wanted the committee to know that that was fine. It's case. coming. Any other liaison reports at this time? Any announcements by members of the committee? I just want to thank the chair for a great but, year. Do, yeah. Wait a minute. I have two. I, I, wait, you, you oh, oh, you. it was already planned. Uh, <laughs> I have two announcements. First, I want to acknowledge that this past Wednesday, March 29th, and each year March, on March 29th was veteran, Vietnam Veterans Day. I want to thank those veterans and all other veterans for their service. Second, and hopefully no other comment, I would like to thank the following for all their help during the, my term as chair the superintendent's administrative staff, the school administration, the superintendent, and all members of the Allington School Committee. Thank you all. Moving on. Are, there any, future, are there any future agenda items? Mr. Schlickman. I think we're, we're, we need to, uh, through the current chair to the vice chair, you know, uh, usually about this time we're getting requests for committee assignments for next year because we will need to vote that at the reorg meeting. Okay. So, you got that? Mm -hmm. She's cool. Right. Um, at this time, uh, I just want to make an announcement about executive session. We will be coming back to regular session, but I am not, I'm pretty sure that the Zoom link and everything will not work. It, when we come back, it will be very short. It will be for a, a vote. It will be recorded and it will be put on the ACMI completed minutes and it will be part of the active minutes of the meeting. So, um, it will be, uh, executive session will be coming back to conduct strategy session in preparation for negotiations with union and non-union non -union personnel. You have a question. I'm sorry. Yes. Do you need me to stick around to sign something tonight? No. Oh. I have work to do. I can sit in the hall and work. Why, why, why don't you? Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Just in case. To conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiation with union and or non-union personnel. Or could... Yes, Dr. Rampage. I'm sorry to interrupt. That's um, all right. I didn't, under, I didn't understand what Mr. Schlickman said about the current chair choosing the vice chair or... No. The, I, I didn't understand... At the reorganization meeting, one of the things that we also vote are subcommittee chairs and things of that nature. So the vice chair, who will be more likely be the new chair, has to communicate with different members of what chairs, they, what subcommittees they wish to be involved in next year. Oh, you mean the current vice chair? Yes. Okay, okay. Didn't understand, thank you. Okay, and before I read this thing for a fourth time, I'm gonna look around. <laughs> and you are not yes, to sorry. Your... Yes, Mr. Carter. Sorry. Go right ahead. Uh, I just wanted to suggest that Julie can pre-sign whatever we're talking about at executive session. She doesn't need to wait. Thanks, Len. <laughs> <laughs> are we ready? Can I say yeah. my speech? <sighs> Executive session to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with union and or non-union personnel or contract negotiation with union and or non-union in which if held in an open meeting may have a detrimental effect to conduct strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation in which if held in an open meeting may have a detrimental effect. Uh, the topics with the Assistant Superintendent for Student Services and AEA uh, contract. Roll call. Ms. Exton. Motion. The, the motion to go into executive session. Roll call. Oh, well, so moved. So moved. Is second. there a second? Second. <laughs> Screw this up right at the end. Right at the end. The last public vote. Yeah, going to mess it up. Are we ready? Roll call. Ms. Axton. Yes. Mr. Schlickman. Yes. Mr. Thielman. Yes. Mr. Carden. Yes. Ms. Morgan. Yes. Dr. Ampey. Yes. And I vote yes. 